So here's how I've set up my iPhone in 2025 to keep my life focused and distraction free. So if you're ready, let's get into it. So I've been using the iPhone 17 Pro Max since it came out and I had the 16 Pro Max before, just prefer the bigger screen and the bigger battery. Uh, you can see the lock screen is super duper minimal. I've got the time uh, kind of enlarged at the top with the date. And then I've got free glanceable widgets for batteries for my Apple Watch and AirPods. So I can just see some battery information on there. Got my free exercise rings indicator there as well. And then I've got two shortcuts, the flashlight, and I've got Google Gemini, which is the AI assistant I'm using right now. And it's quite handy to have that just easily accessible. You can also see I'm in low interruptions mode, which is a focus mode that I created, which during the day just means I barely get interrupted by anything. It has to be an email from a priority sender or someone on my select list that's messaging me for me to be notified. Okay, so before we dive into the apps themselves, first thing I recommend is to customize your icon theme from default to clear. And that way you remove all of the kind of color stimulation every time you unlock your phone. I found it to be really distracting and overstimulating when you've got all of these colors popping out of your screen. So the four golden apps I have at the bottom in my dock are the phone app, which I use quite infrequently these days, but I still feel like it needs to be there. I use Gmail because I've subscribed to Google Gemini and you get loads of cool AI features inside of Gmail, which means I'm already paying for it. Why not start using it? I use WhatsApp because over here in the UK and in Europe, WhatsApp's like absolute king. You'll mostly get messages on WhatsApp usually. And I've got things free, which is my to-do list manager of choice. And the single reason why I don't think I'll ever leave the iOS ecosystem because you can't get this on Android. And I just love the UI and UX of things free. It just makes my mind unclutter instantly as soon as I open it. Going back up to the top, I've got a bunch of widgets that just give me some glanceable information. So the first one's Fantastical, which I think is way, way better than the default calendar app on the iPhone. It's just got a much nicer way about it. I just prefer the, the, the UX a bit. And this widget in particular is really cool because you can see kind of the month on the left side and then you can see today's agenda on the right side. So without even needing to open the app, I've just got that information here. I'm also using Carrot Weather as my weather source. Carrot Weather is by far the best app in terms of like the way it looks and the way it feels when you actually go inside it. But there are some really nice widgets as well that they offer. And you also get these really snarky comments as well, which if you're British, you'll especially appreciate because we love talking about the weather. And then I've got a widget for things free, just highlighting things that are urgent and important that I've tagged just to make sure that it comes to my attention. The middle widgets are just ChatGPT and Gemini. So I scroll between the two of them and depending on what I'm trying to achieve, I will go to ChatGPT, but mostly for most things, I'll use Gemini. I use Notebook LM as well. I live by this app. It's basically allowed me to consolidate all of my knowledge in all of my different note-taking apps into one place. It's great because it means that I'll never forget anything now. And if I need to remember something, I don't need to go rooting through and searching for it. I can just go into the notebook and ask Notebook LM a question. And if I want to take quick notes, I will just use Apple Notes because it's by far one of the best note-taking apps out there. It's the best app that Apple have made. It just works really, really well. And you can see I've organized my notes into projects, areas, resources, and archives. And yeah, I just keep things nice and neat in there. But I mostly just use it for quick capture of notes just to get information out of my head. And then I've got Notion as well that I use, and I pretty much exclusively use that just to run this channel. So to write scripts, to have like different information published on the web that I can share with people, uh, to keep track of my YouTube collabs, that kind of thing. Otherwise, I don't really use this for like personal note taking. And I use Fred's as my main kind of way of marketing this channel and branding myself and just interacting with really cool people, particularly in the tech space. If you are watching this video and you're not on Fred's, it's a much more pleasurable social media experience than some of the other platforms. And at the bottom, I've got an Apple Fitness widget, which again, tells me how I'm doing for my day in terms of like how much I'm moving. But also I use Apple Fitness Plus a lot to do different 20 and 30 minute workouts throughout the day. I pay for that and I think it's one of the best things that I've ever paid for. I've also got a shortcut made up of these two widgets that quickly allow me to trigger different playlists. So one plays a, a house station that's a, a live Apple Music station and the other plays a more chilled out Apple Music station as well. So 
The good thing about that is because it's tied to a station, I'm always getting different types of music come in rather than from a fixed playlist. And I use Apple Podcasts to quickly access my podcasts. I've tried different podcast apps and I just find Apple Podcasts has the best kind of UI, UX, and also just gives me what I need, which is just store podcasts, play the latest ones, not really overcomplicate anything. And I've got my Apple Music app here as well if I wanna to listen to other stuff whilst in the car. I've got YouTube Studio. And then I've got Lightroom, which I use as almost like a camera roll because as soon as you press it, you go into the different pictures that you've taken, but then you can quickly edit stuff in Lightroom as well. And I pretty much use Lightroom on a daily basis. It's again, one of the best um, subscriptions that I pay for. I just love the fact you can edit your photos to like professional grade standard and you can do that from your phone. And finally, I've got Flipboard on here as well. This is an oldie, but a goodie. And it's like a magazine style RSS feed, which just curates news for you to consume. And I basically use this as my procrastination app. So when I'm bored, I will go on here, instead of going on social media endlessly and scrolling, I will just look at news and look at stuff that interests me. Um, and I find that much, much more productive than just listening to people's rubbish on like X. So I'll leave links to the lesser known apps in the description box below. And if you're liking this video so far, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more tech and productivity content. I know you want to. So if I scroll to the left of my home screen, you've got Today View, which I keep very, very simple. I've got another battery widget at the top. You can say I'm paranoid about battery, I know, but just really nice glanceable uh, widget, which I really like. And then I've got the Tesla app widget as well, which is again, really handy to just trigger quick shortcuts for my car. And at the bottom, I've got this shortcut widget, which is made up of these eight quick actions, which basically allow me to open all of these apps, which are all finance related really, really quickly. So if I've got a finance thing, I wanna check my bank, check my balance, check my stocks, whatever it is I wanna do, I know I just need to swipe left and all of that stuff is there. I haven't put it in a folder. It's just easily accessible. And then I've got like a secondary experimental page where I just mess around with apps that I wanna try and just see if they're worthy of keeping and using or maybe even making it to my home screen. So the first one's Grok that I've been playing with and I really love the fact that Grok is slightly different to the other AI chatbots in that it kind of gives you more real-time information because it's linked to X. And so I find myself using it for very specific information, maybe like real-time information about a football game and stuff like that. And also the voice mode is really, really useful because when you're speaking to the voice, when you get a response, you can read the text before the voice actually reads it back out to you, which means sometimes you can get a bit more of a quicker interaction because you can already read what they're gonna say. And as far as I know, there isn't another AI assistant that does this yet. I'm sure the rest will do it as well. But right now I found that really useful that I can speak to it it and actually read what it's going to say before it's actually said it. I also use perplexity, but again, quite sparingly, and I use it to summarize YouTube videos. So if there are long YouTube videos and I've got a long list of things on my watch later that I want to learn about, sometimes I'll just spend a few minutes getting perplexity to summarize those videos so I don't have to watch them. Then there's this new app called Tripsy, which I really like. I love apps that kind of help you organize very specific things. And for this, it's organizing your different trips. You can organize your itinerary. You can say where you're going to go and when. You can upload document information on here. You can share it with people so you all kind of are on the same page. Age. It's just a really fun way of organizing a holiday or a trip. And I just really like the user experience. It's really, really well done. So I've just been messing around with it really just to see is this something I can use on a more regular basis. And then I've got the Matter app, which I think is quite a new app, which I really, really love. I use it as a read it later app. So whenever I find anything on the web, I'll just share it to Matter and it ends up in this queue. And then I can just go ahead and read it and it, it passes the information and makes it look really nice and easily readable. It removes all the ads. So it's just really, really nice way of consuming information. It does more than just act as a read it later app though. It actually reads my emails and picks out newsletters and does the same thing. So I can really quickly and easily read newsletters as well outside of my email app. And it's also got a discover page so it kind of learns what you like and curates articles based on your preferences, which is also really handy. So I'm actually just using it as a read it later app just because I really, really like the way this app is designed. And yeah, it's really cool. I use it in tandem with Flipboard. So if I see something cool on Flipboard, I'll just save it to this and read it later. And then I'm using the Instagram edits app to edit shorts. I find it really, really easy to use. It's got everything I need and it's completely free. So yeah, if you're not using this or you haven't tried it, it's a really good alternative to CapCut and it gives you free captions. So if you're 
a content creator, it might be worth using just for that. Oh, and by the way, I've mapped my action button to trigger Super Whisper, which is basically an AI dictation app. So if I see an email and I wanna quickly reply to it, but I don't wanna type, I can just trigger the action button, say what I wanna say. It will automatically format my words into an email structure. So I started to actually make use of the action button because for about two years, Honestly, I really didn't use it much. I think where it's placed on the phone doesn't really help. So hopefully you found this video useful. If there are apps that you absolutely live by in your app stack, then leave them in the comments below. I'm always happy to try new apps and just curious to know what other people are using. I have been absolutely loving the Super Whisper app, by the way. So if you wanna know more about that app and how I use it on my phone and my Mac, I'll leave a link to that video at the end of this one. I'll see you there.